Hello and welcome back to Global. I'm Tim Wilcox. Now, is this uh, what a future city will look like? High-rise buildings, modern infrastructure, futuristic transport whizzing through the sky. Well, many of us imagine future cities to look like something out of a sci-fi film uh, or maybe a lander on a comet. But what about uh, historical cities, those which have evolved gloriously over several centuries? Incredible heritage, historic buildings full of character and culture. Well, can they bring a modern twist to adapt and cope with the future without destroying the past? Well, the mayors of three European cities have been discussing those challenges at an event for The Economist magazine today. They're now here in the studio. That's the mayor of Rome, uh, Ignacio Marino, mayor of Gothenburg, Annelie uh, Hulton, and the mayor of Porto, uh, Rui Morera. Uh, mayors, uh, I'm not quite sure what the collective noun is. Mayors, thank you, for, thank, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. I mean, all of you, forgive me, I don't know Gothenburg very well, but uh, represent well, some of the most famous cities in, 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 in the world. And I just wonder, starting with you, um, in terms of Rome, how difficult is it to actually marry the, the past with the future in terms of technology and, and, and what people expect? Well, as you say before, Rome was not built in one day and we are still uh, building, particularly infrastructures. Uh, you know, we have a a unique challenge, for example, if you dig in Rome, uh, you very often find uh, an, an, an old villa that is 2,000 year old or a statue and, uh, and therefore it's very much different from other towns to build uh, a subway. So, we are so, so what do you do about that? I mean, how difficult is it to get them planning through to say, look, we, we need to clear we, this? We have a scientist that before you do the actual digging, they study the whatever is uh, under the ground and, uh, and uh, you know, you have to define uh, not really what is the you know the the shortest line between two points but you had to find what is the you know the route that you have to take without destroying uh, you know things that i believe uh, do not belong to romans belong to the entire mankind you know and uh, you know different from these uh, images that you show have shown to us uh, i think uh, you know uh, hundreds of years from now we, we will still have the colosseum so you know one of my most important uh, decision that was very popular abroad but very unpopular in Rome was to close traffic around the Colosseum. We need to protect these uh, monuments but at the same time uh, build uh, infrastructure in order to have... Uh, you so, know, that, so that's been pedestrianised now, hasn't it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I, I remember it was always traffic chaos around, oh, around the Colosseum. Oh, there were 30, before I was elected, there were about 30,000 cars uh, going around and uh, using it as a roundabout okay. uh, every day and I don't think if you would have uh, the Colosseum in London you would have used it uh, as a roundabout, I uh, guess. No. Well, not something that age, but, <laughs> but, but, um, but I suppose in terms of pollution, that's, that's improved the, the look of the Colosseum. But we'll maybe come back to that in a bit, um, in a bit more detail in a minute. But uh, Mayor uh, Moreira with Porto, um, what, are, what are the problems there? I mean, you've got another historic city. A lot of it is quite dilapidated, most beautiful, and people like it for that. What are the problems with, for example, migration, uh, the numbers of people coming into cities? Well, we have to be watchmakers uh, without stopping the watch. That's a difficult thing. Uh, because the cities are built, it's a very old city, we had an old inner city which had been emptied by the population now, we are trying to bring progress in, we are trying to pe bring the people in, not only tourists but also the inhabitants, the traditional ones, the new ones, younger ones, who want to live in the inner city. Why? Because the inner city has these days a lot of attraction, people can go to work, they can walk to work, they have parks, uh, they have the culture there. Uh, so the difficult thing is how to adjust the, this, uh, this change in, in an old historical but, city. But, but, so but putting in fibre optic cables yeah. and things like yes. that, I mean, that, is that straightforward? But what about actually trying to bring more people to live in the city and building within a very confined space? Very easily, or, or if you want very difficult, the plan, the idea is very easy. We have to make the city more comfortable and more interesting. Comfortable in the sense that old buildings can be comfortable, they can be renewed. More interesting in the sense that we have to attract to the city the culture which flew abroad, flew outside the, the walls of the city. We have to bring it again, the center of the city, to the middle. And people these days, what they want is to have it next door. We have now 71% of the people who live in the inner city live within 300 yards of a green area or a park. Right. That's what people want when they have children, when they want to go out or, or go but for a walk. Takes, but it takes money, doesn't it? And Mayor Hulton, just in terms of Gothenburg, are you embracing a lot of private funding for developments in the city? Because obviously there's a finite amount of money people are prepared to pay as city dwellers. 
Not when it comes to building infrastructure. In some cases we're doing it, um, but not in all cases. Normally the local level together with the national level and with congestion charges, which we're having in Gothenburg as well for the moment, uh, are making the investment. But uh, which of course. Prices, prices people off the streets, doesn't it, in some, in some areas anyway? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, not private investors when it comes to infrastructure, not for the moment, no. Okay, and, uh, and what are the specific problems uh, or challenges that you're embracing? I mean, I was reading about your predecessor, Joran Johansson, uh, who was uh, sort of known for his uh, slightly sort of undemocratic nature in terms of just bulldozing things through to get things done. But I mean, uh, what, what are the challenges facing Gothenburg at the moment? The challenge is that we actually have to move forward and also having the people with us when we're moving forward. And of course, there are people, groups, who thinks we, should each, we shouldn't change, and a group of people thinks we should change. And you have to try to combine those two. But the, then, the way you're elected re reflects whether people are pro-change or, or anti-change, as if they know what you're... If they know what you're I, um, I think we have is. reactions on, on both sides, and I think as a politicians you can't go through a mandate period without having a challenge. And we have had positive uh, uh, solutions, but we have also had negative reactions as uh, towards the uh, referendum, we had a referendum on, on congestion charge. People don't, some people don't like it. Okay, mm. all right. Um, Mayor Marina, we were talking about the Colosseum and uh, we also touched on the involvement of private business. I, I think the Spanish Steps are financed by uh, a fairly well known yeah, firm. We I mean, actually... But how difficult is it to, to, in terms of branding, to allow them to exploit the money they're paying with reserving, retaining that cultural heritage? Uh, actually, actually, you know, this was a uh, uh, a huge worry for a, a lot of people when I decide that uh, uh, you know we do not have uh, enough resources monetary resources to restore all these uh, archaeology that we have and also the uh, you know places like the Spanish steps as you mentioned the Trevi fountain so I looked for uh, wealthy people around in uh, in the planet uh, you know like uh, the Bulgari Maison the Fendi Maison uh, other uh, single uh, uh, wealthy people and uh, and you know they're happy to donate but money. How, but, but how do they brand it? I mean, how no, they, do, they don't. They we don't. we we don't we don't allow them to put uh, signs uh, or uh, you know to advertise uh, uh, with their name uh, on the top of the Colosseum. But uh, you, for example, the the guy that uh, uh, donated the money to restore the Colosseum after we closed down the traffic uh, gave us 25 million euros. Uh, so mm. and uh, and for the first time ever in our generation, you. Can now see the Colosseum with its real color. All right, okay, and of course both of you are in the you know the eurozone, and you've got all the problems associated with that. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Holton, what about the the green issues? How difficult is it to actually make an historic city turn green uh, without ruining the infrastructure? As I well? think we managed quite well. Uh, we started out with uh, focusing on the may mayor. Uh, pollution um, source and that was the uh, heating system and we did that already in the 70s uh, so we have a long history on that one the energy questions and now we are discussing the, the transportation system and try to move from um, a more uh, private car situation to, to a, a public uh, public system okay. of course you have public transport in, in Gothenburg nowadays but it has to be a bigger share of the population who actually use public um, yeah. transportation. No, I mean, these pictures are shit. I mean, just, how, just, just how beautiful it is. Just a, 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 running out of time, but um, as far as Porto is concerned, more people coming in, looking after that sort of population increase in terms of waste and sewage and things like that, is, is, is that a problem? Because those projects take decades, don't they, briefly? It is, but a lot, of, a lot was invested in the last 10 years. To give you an example, only 1% of our litter goes to landfill, only 1%, which is a very good sign for southern Europe. We have an underground system which was built in the last 10 years, which has now 62 kilometers, very good. 50% of the Brussels run on natural gas. Within four years, we will have 70% of the municipal vehicles running on electricity. And also, you have the bikes, and you have more people living near their work. So, people, exactly, we are attracting people so that so they can... So, actually, there's a serendipity exactly. about it. Do you know, Reduce well, the distance. Yeah, we are, we, we are, we are, we're out of time, I'm afraid. But it does sound as if all three cities are, are going to be places that, which are going to be still good and interesting to visit in the next 200 years. Thank you very much. Thank you.